Hello book lovers and welcome to Book Talk Radio Club. My name is Claire Harris and today I'm talking to Michael Paul Scott. First time author Michael Paul Scott has just recently published his debut novel Storm Send, part one of a series. It's a detective mystery novel set in an, in an original dark fantasy world with elements of horror and suspense. The consensus amongst those who read early drafts of his debut novel is... Michael Paul Scott establishes himself as a fantasy detective storyteller with an eye for detail and a focus on world building, character development and high intrigue. Sounds good, let's find out some more, shall we? Hi Michael, first of all, welcome and thank you for coming to talk to me on Book Talk Radio Club. Uh, Thank you so much, Claire. It's my absolute pleasure. Would you like to give Book Talk Radio Club's listeners a brief synopsis of Storm Send? I'd be delighted to. At its heart, Storm Send is the story of a good man driven low, a brilliant detective constable framed for murder and chased into exile. His last fleeting glimmer of hope comes in the form of a missive, a letter from a stranger in a faraway land that prompts the former constable to embark upon a harrowing trek across the treacherous waters of the Storm Send Sea, a journey toward the mysterious and forbidden lands known as the Free Wilds. Right. So, a fantasy detective storyteller. Interesting. What was the inspiration for writing about a detective in the fantasy world? A guilty pleasure, to be honest. Some <laughs> of my favorite characters and stories in literature hail from those two genres. Um, I like the idea of transplanting archetypal heroes and villains from one genre into an interesting and unusual setting. Hmm. Um, I'm a big fan of Raymond Chandler's detective character, Philip Marlowe, right. and I felt like it would be an interesting thing to see a character of that archetype dealing with a suspenseful mystery in a medieval fantasy setting. Uh, there was a, a great book that I read as a teenager called The Name of the Rose by Humberto Eco, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a whodunit murder mystery, and its hero was a really intuitive investigator and a priest sent to uncover the cause of the mysterious deaths at an Italian monastery in the 1300s. And there was something about the period piece juxtaposed with like a noir detective plot line mm. that always struck me as interesting. So how many books do you intend on writing in the Free Wild series? The first uh, three books, Stormsend, Vagabond, and Bastion, will all be out this year. Right. Um, I'm hoping to release... The next three books in the saga in 2013 and the final three books in 2014 for a total of uh, nine main novels. I'll also be releasing several novella side stories uh, as well interspersed throughout the next few years. And there will be a 10th full length book, which is going to be a kind of a compendium of short stories, mm-hmm. lore studies, character profiles, and atlas uh, almanac, detailed timeline, things like that. Mm. And I'm hoping to get that out by uh, Christmas time of 2025 to kind of celebrate the announcement of whatever the next saga is to come in the same world. In a refugee shanty town on the outskirts of a vast and opulent imperial capital city, an insidious sect of demon worshippers, the cult of Ibom, begin began to prey upon the gathered, a diaspora of peoples displaced from their nations in the aftermath of a mad tyrant's ceaseless wars of conquest long ago. So who is the cult of Ebon and who or what is Ebon? Well, uh, the cult of, of uh, Ebon or Eben is an affiliation of like-minded aristocrats that hail from disenfranchised regions along the fringes of the eminent empire. Uh, They are a diverse gathering of witches and warlocks, uh, men and women who are very ambitious, uh, unscrupulous, and willing to go to any lengths to attain the power, wealth, and influence that they desire. Mm -hmm. Uh, This cult is in league with an incredibly powerful being called the Ebon Fang, or the Black Lion. Uh, It is a terrifying and cruel demon uh, that takes the form of a great black lion with a tenderless mane and eyes of fire. Um, wow. So the, uh, the Ebon Fang is a power broker of sorts. He accepts sacrificial tributes from the members of this cult in exchange for the very power and influence that they all seek. Tell us about Constable Lucard Alphans. What kind of a man is he? What drives him? Lucard is a good-hearted man who has seen too much. He carries 
carries the burden of a career filled with all manner of trauma and chaos. The people of his world are not familiar with the term, but he is definitely afflicted with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and depression. Mm. Um, especially when we first meet him early on in book one of the saga of the free wilds. This is informed by my own experiences uh, dealing with all three of those. Um, he is an incredibly talented and very observant investigator, a loyal constable with a strong sense of duty, and the oaths he swore when he became uh, a constable in Allgarten are very uh, sacred to him. He's principled, unwilling to overlook the suffering of uh, those members of his profession. You know, they, they might deem people undesirable and beneath uh, some unspoken threshold, and he, he doesn't feel that way. He he wants to be one of the few who go into the less affluent areas of his city mm. and render aid to the underserved and forgotten of imperial society. He has this uh, passion for justice and uh, to protect the defenseless, and it drove him to investigate this string of horrific murders and mutilations and uncover the existence of this cult, and thus he became their next target. And now after he's been framed for murder and exiled, uh, his desire to survive, to seek vindication for himself and justice for the cult's victims, drive his every waking moment. A world builder with an eye for detail. How did you begin to build the world that Constable Lucard Alphans inhabits? And what is the name of that world? Well, our own world uh, goes by many names. Uh, most commonly it's called Earth, but sometimes in some cultures, languages and creeds, it might in literature it might have names like Gaia or Terra mm -hmm. or Sol three third planet from the sun the blue planet the third rock etc. Uh, it's much the same with the world in the saga of the free wilds. Many just call it the world or the earth in reference to the earth beneath their feet. Mm. But the most accurate and apt name would be Worm Shadow. Mm -hmm. uh, I began developing the world over the course of many years, uh, decades really, and it was a collaborative effort in some ways with several friends of mine, some of whom do receive a special thanks on the acknowledgements page for that. I love that. So who is your target audience? Who will enjoy Storm Ascend? Uh, I tend to write the kind of book that I like to read. Right. And while I try to ensure that what I write is as unique and original as possible, I definitely have a number of influences. Um, I think I think every every author does. If you are a fan of fa the fantasy novels of Brandon Sanderson, Patrick Rothfuss, or R.A. Salvatore, mm -hmm. uh, the mysteries of Raymond Chandler, David Baldacci, or James Elroy, and uh, the suspense and horror of Stephen King, Dean Koontz, or Peter Straub, you might find something in the saga of Free Wilds that strike your fancy. Stormson is to be found under the fantasy genre, but it also fits the horror genre as well. How explicit are the horror elements in the story? I mean, would you give a warning to those with a nervous disposition? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I have to imagine that if magic truly existed and it was only the purview of a very select few capable of harnessing its power, it would be an incredibly corrupting influence. Mm. It would be scary in, in the real world. And I wanted the magic in this world to be real, rare, and terrifying to behold. Those who seek its strength, those who are given just the smallest taste of its power would be so tempted by its influence mm. that they could be capable of damn near anything. So I, I used to work as a police dispatcher and I saw firsthand the way that potent addictive uh, drugs and other substances could transform even the best and most beautiful people into something that wouldn't seem out of place in a horror movie. It's just, it, it, sometimes they can turn the, the best and most noble intended people into something they wouldn't recognize themselves. And there's this palpable sense of dread that clings to the world and lurks about every corner. Um, that is part of the reason why it's such a shame that Lucard, a good man and devoted protector of the truly defenseless, has been driven into like this dismal state. Mm. I, as a writer and a reader, find myself rooting for him and wanting him to find a way to succeed despite all the overwhelming odds he faces. Let's talk a little bit about you, Michael Paul Scott. 
We live among the apple orchards and vineyards of pastoral upstate New York with your beloved wife, Christine, while caring for your mother, Regina, and elder sister, Deborah, and adorable dog, Scrappy. What do they think of your book? Your mum, wife, and sister, not Scrappy, unless, of course, you asked him and he has told you. <laughs> uh, my wife is my biggest cheerleader. Oh. We'll be celebrating 20 years of marriage in May. Oh, um, congratulations. She has read earlier drafts of my book, Cover to Cover, and her investment in my success and its success is born out of a passion we both share for these characters and this world I'm building. Um, I began to place a, a heightened emphasis on my writing and to pursue a career as a professional independent novelist after I had a, a nervous breakdown uh, two years ago, actually two years ago to the day that we're doing this interview. Wow. Uh, today, as we speak, it is my birthday. Oh, happy uh, birthday. <laughs> thank you. I'm, I just turned 45. Uh, when I turned 43 in, in uh, 2020, I was in much the same state as we find Lucard Alphonse in the beginning of Storm Send in the grips of uh, just freshly diagnosed PTSD, untenable anxiety, and severe depression. And mm -hmm. At the end of my tether, um, frankly, it was my family on the other side reaching out to me, trying to coax me back from the edge. Mm -hmm. Christine, my mom, my sister, my brother, and yes, even Scrappy. Mm -hmm. um, they were all my beacon and my way of escaping the gray that my life had taken on uh, this colorless state. Mm -hmm. um, writing became a catharsis for me, very therapeutic and liberating in ways that I never really considered it could be. And this project, the saga of the free wilds and the people who inspired me to put my heart and soul into it, they saved my life mm -hmm. and gave a direction and focus. I can't really express how grateful I am for that. While seeking to achieve your lifelong dream of becoming a published author, you amassed a strong set of skills and knowledge about the editing, proofreading, book design and publishing process, ultimately deciding to found the Microscope Publishing Company, LLC. What advice would you offer to new writers hoping to submit their book for publication? The first advice that I'm going to give anybody is to embrace a metric to measure your success that will encourage you to grow and keep going while preventing you from ever feeling like a failure. Mm. Uh, embrace the idea of progress, not perfection. Mm. Um, second is not only to seek wisdom from others, but to find voices that align with your goals and your best interest while discarding those who only serve to sabotage your confidence, your happiness, mm. or your sense of purpose. There will probably be people who, whether they're well-meaning or not, discourage you in some way for, from pursuing this dream of yours. Take what you need from every interaction you have, no matter who it's with, and leave everything else behind. Um, and finally, after you finish that first roughest of drafts, don't spare any effort when it comes to sharpening it into something readers will want to invest in. Progress doesn't end with the words, the end. Uh, get, your, get opinions of your first draft. I used beta readers. I hired a developmental editor and a second copy editor and proofreader. I learned from them how to improve my novel mm. in some truly profound ways. Um, I also learned how to think both critically, productively, uh, optimistically about my work and my ability to do this. And if I can be an independent published novelist, you can too. I believe in you, whoever you are, and I'm rooting for you always. You have a passion for fantasy. Was there a particular author or book that began that passion? Uh, yes, uh, several actually. Um, James and the Giant Peach and the other works of Roald Dahl, uh, mm -hmm. obviously The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings novels, uh, The Blue Sword by Robin McKinley, uh, Terry Brooks's Sword of Shannara, um, and these are just some of the earliest influences. Mm -hmm. Later, I came to idolize Ari Salvatore's work. He's probably my favorite fantasy art, uh, writer. Do you see yourself writing in a completely different genre at any point? And if so, which one? Uh, yes. Um, I have hmm. written already a very personal nonfiction book, sort of a combination of a self-help and memoir that draws heavily from my journaling and my blogging during that summer after my nervous breakdown in 2020. But I haven't figured out whether I'm really ready to share it with the world yet. If I do, though, it'll probably be sometime around Christmas time this year. Um, I also have a lot of interest in science fiction and superheroes, uh, so there may be something there that I want to sink my teeth into at some point in the future, but for now, though, 
I am totally and a hundred percent invested in the saga of the free wilds. It is my primary focus for the next few years at least. Back to your book. You've received some wonderful reviews for your writing, including Get Ready for a Rip Roaring Thrill Ride Latent with Fantasy and Horror Elements. You are in for a treat. And I'm absolutely amazed by Scott's world building skills and how vividly he was able to present the story and its characters to the reader. Also, Michael Scott has created a fantasy novel like no other. His affinity for fantasy and horror are incomparable. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant reviews. So, Michael, lastly, where can Bookshop Radio Club's listeners purchase Storm's End? Uh, Freewilds.net is my official author's website, and it's a great place to start if you're looking to learn a bit more about Storm's End, the saga it begins, and other projects I'm working on. Uh, anywhere that you can buy the books will be uh, linked from the website. The novel itself is available on Amazon.com in paperback, hardcover, and Kindle ebook formats, releasing officially on the 31st of March, 2022. So if you're listening to this after the 31st of March, buy it, it's ready. Uh, also, watch for the uh, audiobook edition. It's going to be narrated by the amazing vocal talents of Peter Wicks and Frankie Porter. It's coming out May 31st, uh, 2022. And uh, the print and digital releases of book two of the saga will be right around the corner at the end of June. Fantastic. All right, well, thank you, Michael. Please come back on Book Talk Radio Club when you've published your next book in the Free Wild series. I'd love to chat with you and hear more. In the meantime, good luck for the future, and thank you, everyone, for listening to Book Talk Radio Club. Lovely to talk to you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye now.